I left Peter in Walsden, Todmorden, to do the rest of the journey to Huddersfield on his own. He had the remaining locks on the Rochdale Canal to do before going on to the Calder and Hebble navigation. He had to book assistance through tool locks for Monday. These are very deep locks that you need help with and booking must be made 48 hours prior to travel. Well, here we are at uh, Tool Lane. At, uh, this is lock three and four. When the canal was closed, they built a new road across here and the only way the canal can get under it now is uh, two locks had to be combined into one very deep one. So that's why we need assistance here. Uh, this lock is, the, I think it's the deepest lock on the canal network. It's just under 20 feet deep. You lost the fender. Yes, yeah. Well, this is the bottom of the lock. As you can see, it's a long way down. to the back of the lock so I'll get water coming in. Right. And the other boat's off. going under the new road which looks pretty dark and we'll see what it's like on the other side. This all went really well and Peter moored up for the night after this before moving on the next day. All was going well and I heard that he had left the Rochdale Canal and was heading to the Calder which would require the use of the Calder stick to open the locks. Later that day, I got this message. When I got his message, I was really quite perturbed and I thought, um, you know, what was the best thing to do? Because we, he was heading for Huddersfield in order to moor up for Christmas. So I suggested that Peter post a request for advice on the Narrowboat and Canal Lovers Facebook group that we belong to. Um, Peter's boat is 58 foot long and so I suggested he just ask the question whether any other boaters had actually done this journey with a boat of that length. He got several helpful suggestions. One of them was to actually reverse into the lock and go down backwards and I had already suggested this to him. So he thought, well, I'll try that the next day, but he really needed help for this because using the Calder stick for the locks, um, you really need to fine tune the water flow and you can't do it if you're on your own with one of these sticks. If the water is going too fast or too slow and you need to use the stick to control the flow, it's not always easy depending on which end of the lock you need to be at, whether you're filling or emptying. So Peter decided to moor up that evening and have a think about what he had to do for the next day. Right, well, unexpectedly I've got some help to get through the locks um, at uh, Salter Hebel, so it's all a bit of a hurry. The chap on the boat behind us here has very kindly offered to help me, so he's gone down and I'm just going to turn the boat around and we'll go down and take it through the locks. So I'll see you in a bit. 
as it happened, Peter only needed to reverse through the first two locks and then he turned around and went into the third lock going forwards. This advice was given him from someone from the Facebook group that he'd requested advice from and it worked really well because he then made it through the third lock and moored up. Unfortunately, another problem reared its head and I don't know what the outcome of that is yet. So this is where things stand. Okay, well, I didn't get uh, much filming done today because it all was a bit too busy. It's really quite dark now. I don't know if I turn slightly, I'll catch a bit more light. But the good news is Mike from the boat next to me very kindly offered to help go through the locks. So um, we've been th through the top three Salter Hebel locks. Um, top two I reversed in and they were tight but we, we were okay. And then I turned the boat around in the pound between number two and number three, which was a guillotine lock, and uh, went through there the right way through. Carried on a bit further and I've just gone through Long Lee's lock, which is the fourth one. Um, I've had to stop now, A, because it's getting dark, but also because I've got a bit of a problem with coolant again. So I'm not going to look at it now, but tomorrow morning I've got to get the deck boards up and I suspect I'm going to find coolant all over the bilge again, which is a real nuisance. But um, there we are, that's, that's where we've got to. Um, <clears throat> I measured the boat as well and it appears that it is actually just over 59 feet long, something like 59 foot 4, so it is a bit longer than the 58 feet it's registered as. Anyway, it's getting dark now and I want a cup of tea and a biscuit and a sit down in front of the fire, so I'll stop now. Does Peter actually make it to Huddersfield? <laughs> I'm afraid at this point in time, I really don't know. I do hope he can get there because there's a lot riding on it for the Christmas period and also for January because my daughter has her graduation ceremony in Huddersfield in January and we were going to be staying on the boat in the area to facilitate all of this. If you'd like to see a video that I did earlier in the year about Huddersfield, I'll leave an end card um, at the end of the video. Please click on it and see what I was doing at that point in time. During the, uh, that video, I also give a leg update because I had an accident back in April and the Huddersfield video was in August and I was still finding my feet, almost literally, to see how much I could do. So I hope you've enjoyed this little brief look at Peter's journey from Hebden Bridge towards Huddersfield and how far he will get, I have no clue at this point, but I'll keep you posted. Thank you to all my subscribers and thank you for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. It would mean such a lot to me. So until next week and next week's video, bye.